<laughs> hey everybody, it's Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You're listening to me, Ethan Van Skyver, 30-year veteran of the comic book industry. Hey, I want to thank you guys because uh, some of my eagle-eyed viewers uh, let me know that uh, I got a mention on TimCast uh, just a couple of days ago. I was on TimCast uh, two weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I got a chance to talk about Comicsgate. I got a chance to talk about uh, the social justice warriors, the, the problem of feminism within pop culture, specifically comics, but it actually extends elsewhere, uh, including um, toys. Uh, and I, I mentioned a study that Lego did, and it, it kind of resonated. It, it seems like it got picked up by TikTok, it got picked up on Instagram, I guess, I don't know, and it, it went viral, so people are talking about it a little bit. And a couple days ago, Freedom Tunes here, this guy Freedom Tunes, who I haven't met yet, I don't know him, I've never spoken to him, but uh, he saw it and he started talking about it. Watch this clip. Your show, and I can't remember the guests, and if you can, That's please me. shout him out, but he was saying there were studies on how boys and girls will play differently. They'll play with the same toy, yeah. but when the boy picks yeah. up the toy, he starts embodying the character he's playing with, whereas when the girl picks up the toy, she has the character act the way she does. Yep. So even when we're playing with, or as kids playing with different toys, we, we or the same oh, toys see, are yeah, like differently. The boy, boy, like the, boy picks, with... the way he described it, I feel bad that I can't remember who it was, it's but the me, way he described Ethan. it is when a boy picks up a Batman, toy now he's batman he's like i'm batman, hey, batman. he's just playing like batman when the girl picks batman up batman's like do you want to have a tea party yeah, then batman and wants a tea party uh -huh. <laughs> exactly like batman actually. okay awesome that's exactly right i'm glad people are starting to understand this and pick this concept up uh, because you know this all comes from the idea this all comes from questions arising from the fact that like you know 10 years ago in comics uh, a bunch of very strange 40-year-old women who acted like 13-year-old kids <laughs> found, the, found their way into the comic book industry and started to make a whole lot of weird changes. Um, it's like a midlife crisis thing. But it, the phenomenon was always kind of the same. You would notice that um, when they were left to their own devices, uh, you would see these, uh, these people pick up comic book characters. You know, these women would... Uh, would would sort of be drawn to comic book characters that kind of looked a little bit like themselves or how they see themselves. Everything is a self-insert uh, with women. And and um, Kate Leth with Hellcat, Kelly Sue DeConnick and Captain Marvel, Gabby Rivera, America, Ch America Chavez, uh, Ewing uh, and uh, Ironheart, uh Chelsea Kane and Mockingbird, even though, like, really the only thing that, you know, she had in common with Mockingbird was uh, they happened to be blonde. That was clearly enough for Chelsea Kane to completely hijack the character and start inserting her own personal cute, cutesy quirks, uh, like, um, you know, her surface level understanding of science or her obsession with corgis. Uh, and that's kind of, uh, <laughs> that's how these chuckle Fs work. They gravitate towards characters that look similar to them or you know how they see themselves they they insist on being represented all the time uh and then you know that's that's kind of how they begin to uh to uh ruin uh the character and all of this i think um comes back to that study from lego that i discussed there uh, and you know sjw's are starting to freak out over this because i'm explaining what's actually going on what this phenomenon is because it, it gets to the core differences between boys and girls we're not the same. Understand, we are just not the same, uh, no matter what. Uh, going back to um, toddler ages, and, and there are differences between male and female. A and the comic book product produced by uh, produced by us will be biological. Uh, will be by biological nature substantially different. Okay, just because of who we are, how we fantasize, and how we play. So, um, again, you know, like uh, like the example I brought up here, stepping away from comics for a minute, talking about toys. Uh, and we know that SJWs have been claiming there's no such thing as gendered toys. A and the, the, the same, um, the kids are the same. Boys and girls play uh, the way they play is all environmental behavior. It's all nurture. Uh, so there, there shouldn't be any pink aisles in toy stores uh, or blue toy aisles. There should just be aisles. A and then if you remember what happened at Toys R Us, um, you know, when Star Wars kind of decided to experiment with this idea that girls and boys toys are the same and boys and girls all love Star Wars toys. Toys R Us, where is it now? It's dead. It's gone out of business. Um, these things, 
little boys and girls are not the same. We are not interchangeable. And there are all kinds of academic studies um, uh, that claim uh, otherwise, okay? Uh, and unfortunately, all of those studies come from like Sweden, but uh, they're badly funded. They're, you know, based on extremely small sample groups, maybe 20 or 30 kids. Uh, but there was one really good that I referred to here back in 2012, and there was one even before that in 2003. Uh, Lego looked at the wreckage of 25 years of failing to sell toys to girls and decided to find out why. So they formed a research department and decided to find out how kids play. And they poured tens of millions of dollars into it. Sample sizes were in the thousands. And they spent two years researching, and then they published this internal top-secret report on their findings. Uh, in 2015, Lego went from the number three toy maker to number one by a broad margin. I mean, they're everybody was buying Legos. And, and still, I mean, you can go anywhere. You can go to Target, Walmart, you can go to any place that toys are sold. And there's an enormous, enormous, uh, you know, uh, location for Legos exclusively. They're the number one brand. Uh, they, they were selling faster than they could produce them. Um, and uh, they were gendered. Uh, you'll notice that they were gendered. Lego created this line called Lego Friends that was exclusively for girls. Every feminist, every media rag bitched and moaned about how, how horrible this all was and uh, how sexist it is. But quarter what they found is that, you know, past the ages of three or four, um, boys and girls play very, very differently from each other. Uh, one of the biggest differences that Lego noticed was how each plays with the minifigures. Boys become the character of the figure they are playing with. So if a boy is playing with a Spider-Man figure, he, be he like the boy, becomes Spider-Man. Girls project themselves onto the figure, so any figure the girl is playing with becomes the girl. And making the character resemble uh, the girl uh, is very, very important. I mean, that's that's part of uh, what this is all about. You, so you see where this is going. I mean, boys take on the persona of the character being portrayed. Girls pr uh, project themselves into the character and change the character to match and reflect themselves. Now, go read any of these comic books. Read these SJW comic books written by females now, you know, and... Um, you'll start to understand, <laughs> you'll start to see that the core biological play instinct uh, come, is, is reflected and manifest in the comics themselves. It's a pattern. Same thing is occurring, and it's probably a huge part of the dissonance. It's why, um, you know, boys who are, you know, regular males who are regularly comic book readers are reading these comics written that are aimed at them, written by women, and they're just having this staticky kind of phenomenon happen where they go, something's not right here, this is terrible. Comics are, at heart, very much a boy's form of storytelling. That's the truth, okay? The reality of it. Uh, comics as we know them, superhero comics, uh, are for boys. Uh, that's what it is. And, and while female writers, they, they might be good writers, and some of them really are, uh, stepping into that boy's storytelling while telling it as a girl creates this subtle dissonance that results in uh, what we see, the two-dimensional, dull, cardboard stories. And they, it's because they can't help but project themselves into the toys, into the characters. And it just doesn't work for comic book characters. It doesn't work for superheroes. It, it kills them. The reader, you, need to be able to project yourself... Uh, into or the character onto yourself that's the natural order of things you're reading batman you're having a fantasy about you being batman right you're reading wolverine you're having a fantasy about you being wolverine not wolverine being you and that's the difference between um boys and girls nobody wants to project like kate leth or chelsea kane <laughs> or uh any of these other oh my god all these horrible other uh, female writers, uh, these SJWs, onto themselves. Uh, they don't want to do that. Nobody wants to be like this. Uh, nobody wants to just imagine that they are uh, Kelly Sudaconic or anything like that. And that's that's the end result of this. The end result of this is that when you're reading their books uh, as a guy, uh, you are having those attributes. <laughs> you're forced to kind of take those attributes on yourself, which explains probably a lot of the soy boys uh, that have sort of fallen in line here, and, and their behavior, their feminine behavior. Uh, look, this is uh, this is the way towards madness. It's the way towards alcoholism to like project, you know, Kelly Sudaconic onto yourself. Um, 
you know, and obviously it's the way towards lower lower sales uh, for a, an audience that doesn't exist. And, and that's the truth. But we're not allowed to point this out because misogyny. We, we haven't been able to talk about this because, oh, you're sexist, oh, you hate women, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, don't, I don't hate women at all. I love women, uh, and I love women the way that they are. Uh, they're just fine. They're great. Um, and uh, they're not very good at writing superhero comic books for boys. Um, not usually. There's some, there's some exceptions, but for the most part, it just isn't in their wheelhouse. So anyway, uh, that's what this is. That's what people are talking about here. I want to make this clear. I want to make this kind of idea understood so that people can discuss it a little bit better. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Um, you know, <laughs> do you disagree? Do you agree with me? Do you have examples of this that you've noticed yourself or anything like that? Let me know. Uh, also, of course, check out um, all of the links in the description which lead to our eBay store and the comic books uh, that we produce here at All Caps Comics, Cyberfrog, Rainbow the Brood, all of the products and toys that we make. Please do support independent comics, independent media. Uh, because we've lost this war. I mean, we really have lost this war. The mainstream is uh, inextricably screwed um, by these terrible choices and the fact that they do not distinguish between gender at all anymore. I mean, it's just verboten to do so. Uh, anyway, leave me a comment, like, share, and please subscribe. Thanks, everybody. See you again soon with another video. Come follow me on Twitter. New from all caps comics, Rainbow the Brute. The last real man in Fairyland. A tale of prismatic pain, a spectrum of brutality, and a pretty good dad. Choke slam a unicorn by backing it today, only on Indiegogo.